What's up, everybody? RBL Commissioner Pat Barker here with some upcoming tour dates in case you want to see Roast Battle in a city near you. If you're in L.A., every Tuesday in the Belly Room, we are also going to be at Jam in the Van on February 22nd to continue the California Cup. That is going to be the conclusion of the first round of that tournament. Make sure you're following Jam in the Van on Instagram to get the info on that. It's invite only. On the 28th of February, we'll be in Tacoma, Washington at Nate Jackson's Super Funny Comedy Club. March 3rd, we will be back at the Mothership down in Austin, Texas, ComedyMothership.com for those tickets. Uh, Tempe. Uh, in the greater Phoenix area, we will be at the Tempe Improv on March 13th, the first of several dates we have lined up there. Check out their website for more info. And then three days after that, on March 16th, we will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area at the Big Laugh Comedy Club. Uh, all of our on-sale on dates and uh, tour dates can be found by following us on Instagram at uh, Roast Battle and then clicking the link in the bio. So make sure you check that out for more. Without further ado, here's this week's episode of RBL Weekly. <laughs> What's up, everybody? RBL Commissioner Pat Barker here, joined as always by the host and creator of The Roast Battle, Brian Moses. We are back for part two of our episode on the expansion cities. Uh, last episode, we watched Manchester and Montreal, our new international cities. This time, we'll be checking out Cleveland and Atlanta, our new cities here in the American division. They're, they're both going to be slotting in with Chicago and New York in the east, so they're going to have an uphill climb ahead of them. Uh, I guess today we're going to check it out and try to look for the elements that uh, could make them a success as we go forward in the league. It's good to be back in America, Pat, talking about the American guys, talking about the American teams, uh, home of, you know, we get to do legal types of drugs and shoot guns. Hell yeah. yeah Absolutely. It's good to be back in the States. Yeah, that's, um, that's, uh, that's what everybody else knows us for, and uh, we might as well embrace that. Yeah. Shout out LA, shout out Denver, shout out the Bay Area, shout out Austin, all places with really, really, really uh, cool gun culture. Yeah, absolutely. And Denver, by the way, uh, mushrooms decriminalized. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a uh, that's a uh, that's a big thing out there, man. They're they're like one step away from just like free fentanyl for everybody. They're just gonna <laughs> hand it out at the DMV when you get your driver's license. They're fucking psychos out there. I dude. love how you're always like, oh, we, 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 I gotta monetize now because you're talking about fentanyl. Moses. I know, I know. Now I figured I'd beat you to the punch. You're fentanyl king now. this time. Absolutely, yeah. It's a funny drug for a punchline. <laughs> as as a, as a writer, you always got to look for the funniest drug. You know, yeah, Fenny is funny. What what would be the funniest one to hand out at the DMV? And I landed on fentanyl. I stand by that decision. Um, the American East Division is going to be uh, two of our, you know, heaviest hitters in New York and Chicago and Atlanta and Cleveland perhaps being thrown to the Wolves. Um, wow. I would love to be able to restructure these divisions. I kind of did that a little bit on the international side because the European cities are all so close. Mm -hmm. But uh, West and East are West and East. And uh, despite what Major League Baseball did years ago, I cannot put Atlanta in the Western Division I can't even things out. They're just gonna. They're just gonna have to go for it, man. They are in there with two of our heaviest hitters, the Cleveland and oh man, wow, that is fun. This is gonna be exciting. Uh, yeah. Cleveland's been doing it for eight years. I learned last episode, uh, so this is gonna be fun to see how those guys have uh, grown and entering their debut into the league. Atlanta, we've been trying to get that scene for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there, I think, for two seasons of uh, Roast Battle in the States on Comedy Central. So they've kind of grown, and they have just a culture of shit-talking anyway. You know, it's a, it's a real history of, of shit-talking in Atlanta anyway, so it's going to be fun to kind of see if they bring a new flavor and a new style to the scene. So I'm excited to see these two cities. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, you, you alluded to Cleveland, the fact that they have been around for so long. They were one of the first non-LA roast battle cities there was. They've been running this show continuously for eight years now uh, called the Ad Hominem Attack Show. And talking to those guys, they've gone through some of the same um, sort of growing pains that you see in cities like LA where you initially get super hot for a few years because it's new and it's fresh and everybody wants to do it. And then you kind of get that dip where people are like, ah, I've done it, you know, whatever. Then COVID hits, they're coming back from that. I'm One of the things I love most about Cleveland is seeing the reinvigoration of that city. Because when you have a show that's gone on as long as it has, you don't want to use the word stale, but definitely kind of a thing where I think some comics are like, okay, been there, done that. 
reintroducing it as RBL Cleveland, part of the league. Hell yeah. Is that changes everything. And when we talk about the growth in the other cities, the affiliation with the league, I think Cleveland, you're going to have a lot of guys coming out of the woodwork and, um, and just coming out swinging. Well, I'm excited to see it. Let's see what Cleveland's Let's got. Let's jump you know, right into Metropolis. it. We're starting with Cleveland, and uh, <laughs> this battle, this battle is uh, is very entertaining, especially for one of the reasons uh, explained at the very top of it. Um, this is uh, Tabitha Jones versus Chris Clem, and it's from Cleveland. Here it is. All right, uh, I probably shouldn't start with this, but this is something that Tabitha betrayed me with. <laughs> She's like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if you dress like Fred Durst and I dress like Jonathan Davis from Corn? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. I have a men's 2XL Adidas jumpsuit. I'll bring it for you to wear. And this fatty couldn't even fit into it. <laughs> so now I'm standing here dressing like I'm about to shoot a Nookie video in a jackass. <laughs> it's all because you have such little self-respect. You can't even... Drop 10 pounds to fit into a men's tracksuit. <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> Tabitha looks like Dr. Eggman if his goal wasn't stopping Sonic the Hedgehog, but was instead stopping Hot Topic from going out of business. <laughs> all be as unhappy as you to the point that we actually try to lose weight, Chris. Kyle <laughs> 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 Hardhorst is very happy. <laughs> How does it feel to know you work this hard on making yourself a handsome buff dude just to have all the interests of a fat, bully goth girl? <laughs> <laughs> means I respect people for who they are. <laughs> Tabitha works in payroll uh, because nothing says aging emo who's given up on life like doing paperwork at an hourly rate. <laughs> the good news is you now have a new reason to slit your wrists. <laughs> accused of being a bully many times. I wasn't surprised when I learned this seeing as Chris dresses exactly like my elementary school bully Randy. 1998 called, it's amazed you weren't stupid enough to enlist after 9-11. <laughs> Sorry, I have to rip up one of my jokes because you basically just did it. <laughs> you had just the butt of that one, but it was about how I looked like I bullied you as a child. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't old enough to enlist after 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> like two years, I messaged you about it. it yeah, they still did so what are you going to say about it? Tabitha is always, I should say, Tabitha is engaged. No, I guess. Yeah. 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 right there. To me. Yeah. Yeah. Tabitha oh, is always raving idea. about her fiance's family accepting her in the most basic way in social media. Which means, <laughs> <laughs> which means we were just a few childhood hugs away from Chris Paw being the funniest bisexual ad hom attack show host. <laughs> Or if you prefer, a few hugs away from Kyle Honhorst being the funniest fat at Hobbit in the Tattoo House. <laughs> or if you prefer, a few hugs away from Jeremy being the funniest at Hobbit Tag Show host with blue hair. Yeah, Jeremy, I'm gonna have to change this up soon. <laughs> I look at you and I just get scared for me. <laughs> Start brushing. <laughs> Chris Plum used to live in L.A. 
He left because L.A. is not the place for tall buff dudes trying to make it into entertainment. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's exactly what it is? Oh, buddy, I think you messed up. Tell my wife. <laughs> Tabitha loves the band Corn, but unfortunately, she will never be a true fan. Because unlike Jonathan Davis, she wasn't attractive enough to have been molested as a child. <laughs> well, fuck that one. <laughs> that one's too mean! We don't, we don't really know that. Me and my therapist. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this next one, I uh, Chris's old podcast, Pretty Swell Guys, had most of their audience in India. This was before Chris lost a bunch of weight, so I can only assume all of their Indian listeners were confused and thought they were just supporting a sacred cow. <laughs> I see. It's okay for you to make those jokes because you're fat. <laughs> Tabitha has fucked so many older Italian men, she gets PTSD opening cans of Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Which she does every single day because she's fat! And lazy! But it cooks for me already. <laughs> Chris Clem shares a birthday with American baseball legend Cumberland Posey, who went by Cum Posey. C U M Posey. Which makes sense because I heard that's what Chris used to give girls in college before campus security demanded he stop. <laughs> he would come on the flowers. <laughs> that was my vision. That's good. That, that's, we, each, well, yep, I counted wrong again. <laughs> okay. And it, Cleveland already has one roast battle tradition down, which is the host miscounting how many jokes have been done. They have been doing this eight years. Yeah, 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 yeah. They learned from never, the best. You never know, man. It's hard because there's rebuttals, <laughs> there's people talking to you. You know, it's it's crazy. So shout out my uh, ad hominem uh, counterpart over there hosting and messing up those uh, <laughs> <laughs> the joke number. Uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, Cumberland Posey is one of the worst jokes I've ever heard. I'll oh start God. with that. I it's <laughs> it's so like. <laughs> First of all, I'm the biggest baseball fan ever. I've never heard of that guy. Um, it's just very funny. She like Googled his birthday and on page 900, it's like, oh yeah, Cumberland Posey. And she's like, he comes on flowers. Like it was such a reach, but she had so many other fucking like really good ones in there. Um, I also just love the simplicity of like, he moved to LA. LA is not the place for like hot guys trying to, and she's like, wait, what? That's exactly what it is. Um, she had like a great fun personality and like some really, really, uh, funny jokes. And then he, he, he was, uh, he was, he was punching from the beginning. Um, starting with acknowledging the Fred Durst thing, I thought was like risky, but like really funny. And it added, uh, frankly, like a whole like friendship vibe to this battle that we didn't get, uh, as much. I feel like last episode. I absolutely there wasn't anything surface level you could tell they were friends everything was rolling off of each other they were laughing at each other's jokes and usually a familial battle like that usually does play very well to the audience it feels like you're in on the inside jokes even if you don't know them you're in on them and even like staying in the moment you could tell Tabitha is a very good comedian mm -hmm. because she she had great stage presence of if something didn't land she she was present about it self-aware about it talked about it you know even the composy joke you hated yeah. I thought she played it off well being like <laughs> He's coming on the flowers. <laughs> yeah, what I, I was picturing. And I didn't just, say it wasn't entertaining. Right. I just said it was a bad joke. It wasn't. <laughs> bad jokes can be entertaining. It was great. So I, I really appreciated that joke. I remember Chris uh, Clem out here, actually. I don't know if he actually battled once, but I remember him as a comic. He's a funny dude. And those were, that was a really funny battle. Shout out Cleveland. That was fun. Yeah. And, and just absolute, like, chaos. Every video they sent me, I felt like, was in a different location with weird, <laughs> different, like, artwork on the wall. That one had, like, a like a gorilla posing in, like, a sexy manner. There were, like. Don't and, talk about Tabitha like and, that. Oh, that was good. Hell yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> no, um, really a lot of fun. And uh, that's one thing that I love about Cleveland uh, in all the battles you see is kind of that, that friendship vibe. I got that more from their city than others. And I think that's a product of being around for eight years and everybody in the scene kind of like knows each other um, versus the places where it's brand new and they're, they're throwing it all together. Um, we're going to watch one more Cleveland one before we move on to Atlanta now. Uh, this one uh, was also a lot of fun. Uh, this uh, this is from, I believe, their current venue where they're going to be shooting from now on. And uh, it was shot on a security camera, apparently. Um, <laughs> I, I've had, I can say this because I've had all these conversations with the people. I'm like, just put one in the center. What the fuck are you guys doing? Uh, <laughs> but I really enjoyed uh, this battle as well. This is Hannah Belmont versus Chris Scriva. Here it is. Man, dude, I, I was hanging out with Hannah a couple days ago, and she actually told me she has one phobia, and it's a fear of vomit, which means she must live in fucking terror as a bulimic girl. <laughs> I'm one of the ones that shits it out. Um. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Women shit. All right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Sorry. Go ahead, she brother. <laughs> Chris looks like after he fingers a girl, he cartoonishly licks every single one of his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I need more calories. <laughs> Savor the juice. <laughs> Delicious. Talking about fingering, why does Hannah look like a girl who gets fingered at a good Charlotte concert? <laughs> what are you so sad about, dude? <laughs> Hot Topic's still open, I think, in Boardman. Chris is actually really excited to be roasting a girl. Um, it's because it's the closest he's going to get to giving dirty talk to a woman. <laughs> Talking about sex, Hannah's pussy is a lot like the 16th annual Cleveland Comedy Festival. There have been tons of Midwestern comedians in that shit this week. And no one's using it as a credit. <laughs> Hannah be fucking. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> uh, Hell yeah. Um, Hell yeah, brother. Guys, uh, Chris's brother is gay. Um, yeah. Which means his brother's seen more dicks um, than Chris has seen his own. <laughs> uh, joke's on you. It's enormous. Um, Not big enough, uh, though. That's at least what my mom says. She says your balls aren't supposed to be in your stomach. I don't know if you knew that. But, uh, I'm an innie! <laughs> I'm an innie. Dude, I really think it's very courageous of you, Hannah. Very courageous to be proving stereotypes wrong, especially the one that Jews are funny. <laughs> You're proving the one that fat guys are funny wrong, huh? so it's fun. <laughs> I'm jolly, it's different. Oh, hell yeah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ho, 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 that's ho, ho. me, all right. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> Chris looks like the evil toy collector from Toy Story 2. <laughs> yeah, you best believe it. <laughs> but only if he collected child porn and Hot Topic oh, gift cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I give the Hot Topic gift cards to Hannah. <laughs> and I use them. <laughs> Dude, Hannah actually shares a lot of the same facial features as Sid from Ice Age. Her eyes are so far apart, she sees shit in IMAX. People need it for your dick. Um. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm getting tore up by the gay Babadook over here. Oh, yeah. Gayer. Babadook's already gay. You should know that. You look like you like queer cinema. Um, I do. I love yeah. watching gay. He's <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite show on TV. I'm like, hell yeah. I heard gays on at 9 o'clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. You do look like you love to catch a predator. Um, I, I'm, I am on it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Hansen, get out here. Um, he's coming out on that camera. Oh, um, shit. I thought you were a little girl. <laughs> Oh wait, no, it's just the 13 year old I'm roasting right now. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not wearing like four chokers right now with that eye line, dude. <laughs> I may be younger than you, but I don't need a diaper. And, uh... <laughs> all right. She just shits in the street like a monster. Yep, and you lick it up, all right. Yep. That's what they call me, Chris Shit Fetish Screamer. <laughs> <laughs> old scatty boy. All one right. guy, one cup. <laughs> Fatty with the scatty, am I right? Yeah, All dude. right. Yeah. <laughs> These aren't even, we're just having fun. Yeah, oh. this is back with school bus stuff. This, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is teamwork. This is teamwork. We're gonna roast you motherfuckers next! Yeah! What, yeah! what the fuck is up? 
Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck is up, white Jason Momoa? You oh, know shit, it. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> My turn, or you? I don't know. Go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chris has been engaged for three years. Um, they haven't gotten married yet. It's because bestiality is not legal in Cleveland yet. But uh, incest is. So your brother's fair game. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Thank God I live in Pennsylvania where we fuck cows. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, that was chaos. That was a lot of fun, man. <laughs> all right, Cleveland, you got my vote, too. I love the way you guys do this because you guys all know each other. It feels like you guys are doing a roast battle in your grandma's living room <laughs> or a moose lodge. I don't know what's happening. I love it, though. Uh, that wasn't even a roast battle at that point. It was just like two friends just talking shit about each other and trying to go as nasty and as hard as they could. Yeah. It, become the, it became like the dirtier, filthy show. It was brilliance uh that was great hannah and chris also why is every dude in cleveland who roast battles called chris uh that's a good question yeah. we've seen two of them and they were both named chris so yeah, that's white boys. theory tracks yeah. yeah also uh white jason momoa is trevor mimosa mm. that's for you hannah that's doesn't what? matter look at you uh, doesn't matter <laughs> dude i mean that battle was it, it's so funny because in the first one when i was busting your balls about forgetting how many jokes they've done and you're like it's hard and i'm like oh, fucking idiot no it's not it's so easy what a fucking moron and then i watch that and i'm like i have no idea you're right thank you that one was absolutely out of control um but yeah i mean th that's that's one of those like if you're in like if especially if you're in the room like, I've seen battles like that. DeHerm is a guy who always oh has battles God, like that so out here. so fun. It just feels like he knows everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, like, doubled over, like, laughing because it's just, like, they're not even attempting jokes half the time. They're just, like, trying to one-up each other in the gross category. It was When he says she shits in the street like a monster. <laughs> oh, and he licks it up. He's like, you know me, Chris, shit fetish. I was like... <laughs> Oh, this is my favorite. This that's that's yeah. ball busting one on one right there. That is a that's a style we don't get to see a lot. Just guys, just kind of that's right. like the stand, you know, like when uh, Evan uh, Williams and uh, Scott and Chaplin. Scott Chaplin were yeah, going at it. Yeah, it's got yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of vibe of just real familial. It's real intimate because the scene's so on top of each other. You know, the the whole the the place the venue they're in. So it was also I, I like Chris Clem when he was when he had the uh, the flashcards over the phone. Everybody mm. else has a phone, and even like because Cleveland's so familial, they'll be on the phone, but they're almost like using it as like no paper, like ah, right, this idiot, right, and then going back as almost as a reference, you know, or yeah. a prop even. So I, I don't see the phone as much with Cleveland because it maybe it's the experience they have, because you see it with Chicago, you see it with the Bay, you see it with everybody else, but with those guys because they're so ball busty, you mm -hmm. don't even notice they're using the phone. But with Chris Clem, I did like that he used uh, note cards because it feels like he's prepared more. Yeah, almost feels like a late night host. Mm -hmm. You know, correct. Yeah. So, um, and and that is something that Chicago really preaches. When I was out there, and they had the pre-battle meeting, it was like, do not use your phones on stage. You can use notes. Mm -hmm. If you notice, Chicago actually, there's no phones. They come out with full like notebooks and shit. Like, Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know you're you're big on that. You prefer the the handwritten notes over the phone. I because it just looks like you're more prepared. If if we're doing this thing called roasting and battling, right, and then the whole premise is like, oh, it's like a rap battle, but it's for you know, we're we're roasting. We're using punchlines over raps. So it's uh, I like that you're prepared as almost like you're going to a Comedy Central roast like Greg Giraldo or Jimmy Carr, mm, right? Yeah. And being like, thank you, this such and such, this person, da 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 If you didn't know, I just kind of like that as opposed to, oh, shit, I got to write this on my notes and then just kind of say it. it. It just doesn't look prepared as much right. as, you know. I think I've reached the point where I'm like, I don't care as long as you're not reading the joke off of it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have to be as militant as we are in L.A. where it's like, no, you put everything in your head and... Because that adds so much pressure and stress. That's just the way I do it, so I'll keep doing it that way. But, like, for other cities, I think it's fine if you're, like, glancing at it and then it's your turn and you put it down or whatever. Like, just to, you know, don't... But, again, in some cities, Montreal, that Harrison kid that was that battled it's last week... It's a prop. It's, like, Cleveland, the same thing. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost like a prop as opposed to an actual device of... Like, when right. Jimmy Carr would come out with the the uh, clipboard, mm -hmm. it was it was empty from what I heard. Oh, yeah, never he, used it. He didn't even have jokes on there, but he acted like he was reading off of there as a prop, so... Um, um, overall, uh, Cleveland, a lot of fun. Um, they are psyched to be in the league, man. Those guys are very, very fired up, which I love to see. We didn't say this actually last episode uh, for part one, but the championship battlers, nobody used notes. No. Not, I mean, even in the second battles they battled, yep. nobody used notes. They, they, were, they memorized everything. And if you look at Scotland, the way they battle and the way London battles, they do a lot of big monologue-y type jokes, uh, and they didn't use 
phones, notes, anything. anything. I thought that was even more impressive. And I, th I think that's what separates the best in the world from everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, especially like in London and Scotland where they do routinely have the, the, the phones there. They were like, no, we're going out there. We have to be like at that level. And they had everything fully committed to memory. It was really, really cool to see. Yeah, that's badass. Um, yeah, so shout out to those guys again. Um, so that was Cleveland. Uh, and now we look at our final expansion city uh, for the 2024 season. I'm talking about Atlanta. Atlanta had a lot of things going for it that I really loved. Um, some, and you know, I feel bad for other cities like Milwaukee. Milwaukee had a great um, presentation. They sent some great battles in and they were asking me, they're like, what, what are you going to be making this decision based on? And the, the sad truth is it's on a lot of things, some that are within the control of the city and some that are not. A lot of things Atlanta had um, I really like, number one, geographically, we don't have anybody in the Southeast. That's an area of the country that we want to be in. They're not near any other city. You know what I mean? Number two, the, the support of the Laughing Skull Lounge Comedy Club and a great multicam setup, like ready to go. Like that, that shit is, if you have that, that's uh, definitely a check mark in your favor. Atlanta is another city like Montreal, who's kind of like starting from scratch. But it's a great comedy city. We know that they have great comics there. We know the scene is going to build. And they have a lot of elements in place, including the host of the show, Jerron Horton. My boy. Who is uh, a roast battle legend. I mean, he, he, was, he was one of the killers out here in the early days of, of the show. Yeah, he wrote on season one of Roast Battle. I think he took the second season off because he was writing for everybody at that point. Every TV yeah. show, just anything. That guy's a killer. Uh, he sold his own uh, animated series that's on Tubi right now. Um, and then he battled Matthew Broussard in a epic classic battle yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. in season three of uh, Roast Battle. They had, a, they had a great one. And um, so having somebody on the ground floor who, who's been around that long and uh, frankly is a, an excellent host. I watched the full show. I'm like, this guy, he took the, the, like, the, the best elements of like you and added his own like twist to it. Oh, um, I love it. Which is, uh, which is really good. Now, Atlanta, one thing they did on these early videos that they sent me, they did the old school belly room three round style. So we're going to watch a couple of these. I do think going forward into the season, they're going to be pulling back to the one round five joke. Um, but this is... I'll tell you, for the first submission, it's very ambitious to be like, our first show, we're making everybody go three rounds. Very. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but uh, the, these guys pulled it off. So the first one we're going to watch uh, is a really fun battle between Brittany Dent and Holly Ballantine. Here it is. Round one. Let's fucking go. Let me hear that thing. There we go. I was pretty surprised that y'all wanted me to roast Holly because it looks like the sun is doing a pretty good job. Uh, I've heard Brittany hate on white women a lot, but as a woman named Brittany with a Yorkie and a podcast about dance, Downton Abbey, uh, you're trying really hard to be one. And succeeding. Okay. It's really cool that Holly chose to do comedy because she was so obviously made for horror. <laughs> uh, I mentioned Brittany has a small dog. I'm just glad she doesn't have cats because no one should be forced to spend nine lives with her. <laughs> Holly definitely looks like she gets all her exercises chasing black people out of TJ Maxx. <laughs> Um, honestly, I feel really sorry for Brittany. I mean, at 40 years old, I'm sure she definitely thought she was going to be a grandmother by now. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, I chose we are to back to the fucking house. roast battle, y'all. Let's roast, baby. Let's roast. Um, Brittany shares Xanax with her dog. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's good to know that taking dog medication won't make you suffer, but it will make you insufferable. <laughs> Holly looks really nice tonight. It looks like she almost got all the mold out of her best Lularoe. This is free people. <laughs> no, honestly, Brittany is very talented. I mean, she's like Beyonce if she were stung by her own beehive. <laughs> Uh, it's really good to see Holly here tonight, but it is really sad to see what Beth has done to Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> Tragedy. Um, Brittany was the teaching assistant in the comedy class I took, so honestly, nothing I can say here tonight will hurt as much as me being more successful than her. <laughs> Holly looks like she gets her vibrators from Hobby Lobby. 
The rhinestones are for her pleasure. Okay. That right. was funny when the guy said it to me at Cleveland last week. <laughs> Keep it going for these fucking ladies bringing that heat. But let's fucking go. Um, it's cool that Holly is never afraid to reinvent herself. It's just a shame that this time you chose Kathy Bates for misery. <laughs> You've lost weight, is what Brittany Scale said when I stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, Holly comes from Texas, and they say the only thing that comes from Texas is steers and annoying white women. And Holly is both. <laughs> you look like you give blowjobs using just your teeth. <laughs> her daughter is her best friend and she homeschools her daughter to make sure she ha never has any other options. <laughs> In all seriousness, Brittany is so funny. I mean, I'll never forget the first time I heard her do comedy six years ago because she still does those same jokes now. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was fire, y'all. Come on, man. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want to say about Jaron as host? Go. He does it. I love him. He's so funny. It's just like me. Just, all right, y'all, let's kind of keep the energy going in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> we just heard some crazy shit. Yeah. Well, it's also funny, like, jumping from round to round because it's just like Jerron poking his head in and out every few jokes to check on the crowd and be like, how's it going? All right, let's roast. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought, uh, I thought very different from what we just saw out of Cleveland. You know what very I mean? Very different. It felt very different. Very more formulaic. A little more robotic. You could tell they were kind of friends, but they were going for the jugular a little more. I'd yeah. say Holly was definitely going for haymakers, uh, and Brittany was kind of going for jabs and more consistency, I think, in her jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, I, At 40 years old, I know you thought you'd be a grandma by now mm. is uh, outstanding. And then, like, the last one, I don't know if that's a joke that connects with regular crowds. Like, you're still doing the same jokes as six years ago, but as a comedian... I'm like, ooh. Yeah, off screen, both of us went, ooh. Yeah, like, yeah, Because yeah. that is, I heard some personal friends say that to some other personal friends, and they're not friends anymore because yeah. of that. Like, oh, man, that is, that's below the belt. But that was really good. That's a tough one. But it was, I mean, it was a, a really fun battle. The, look what Meth did to Melissa McCarthy was, <laughs> was great because it's just a spot-on comparison. Um, but you do see the difference between a city that has been around for eight years mm -hmm. and, like, everybody kind of knows each other and Atlanta where it's like, hey, we're just pulling these. We know these how to write some jokes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I do think that's one thing that was really interesting when I talked to our point person in Atlanta because I, I interviewed everybody and I was sort of asking like um, about a number of different things and I was like, what do you think like your, your weakness is in, you know, if you had to pick one? And he was like, honestly, it's like finding the roasters. And that was for the first couple ones that they did because – Apparently, like, the people in Atlanta, and I think this will change once they're part of the league. I'm not worried about that at all. Any city who said to me, like, I don't know, finding people who want to do it, um, especially in a big scene like Atlanta, right. they're going to want to do it. But the initial ones, it seems like they're, like, everybody's afraid of, like, kind of getting their feelings hurt. You know yeah, what I mean? It doesn't feel good. This is a gladiator sport. That's why this isn't like stand up where, you know, you can it's synergy between the audience. This is synergy between you and your opponent. I mean, like, there's nothing like this. Like you're yeah. you're supposed to do a dance with somebody that's talking shit to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. So I, I think that's one thing that as they uh, as they move forward, it's just going to come naturally. Right. You know what I mean? The, your, your first few you're up there, like just like, let me remember my jokes and do my jokes and everything like that. And then as the scene comes closer. You're going to see, I think, uh, a lot of changes in that regard. You just become friends ball busting each other. And I think I, yeah. I, I know that the culture right now is such that we don't do that kind of a thing because we don't want to hurt each other's feelings. But ultimately, that's how comedy has always been since, you know, the, the, the boom in the 80s, the explosion that happened, you know, when it started with the comedy clubs in the 70s into the 90s with uh, the urban comedy scene. And then, you know, when roasting became a thing on Comedy Central, yeah. right after it was a thing in New York because of the Friars Club, you're seeing a lot of that ball busty culture kind of move throughout a lot of the comedy clubs clubs now and i think because of some of the pushback of the cancel culture whatever the fuck that is um you're gonna have people saying no you shouldn't say that or do that but we're all consenting to this this yeah, is yeah. the one place you can consent to we're all gonna say these things we're all gonna do these cartoon you know <laughs> uh you know jokes you're not supposed to do so like that's i'm sorry everybody it's gonna happen like this is happening not forcefully with consent yeah
Exactly, exactly. Um, well, this this next battle, uh, the last one we're going to watch today, uh, was a lot of fun. This is definitely, I love battles that are either visually identical um, or visually so far apart. And that's uh, that's kind of what we got in this one. I really enjoy it. You're looking at the still on the screen right now. You know what I'm saying it is accurate. It looks like David Spade and Chris Farley. Yeah. Big time. Uh, great, Laurel great Hardy, call. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Luke Bentley and Zach Wright from Atlanta. Here it is. Let's fucking roast, guys. Let's do it. All right, uh, normally, uh, when a comedian is a larger male comedian, audiences usually assume that they are like fun and jolly and like hilarious and happy and like the life of the party. I just love Luke Bentley for breaking those stereotypes. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Zach used to smoke a lot of cigarettes, which was a good way to keep people at a distance so they couldn't see the eczema. Uh, it is flaky. Zach's skincare routine is like his mom. Uh, absent. Uh, okay. uh, not, not everyone knows this. Luke Bentley is actually a substitute teacher. Uh, I found this out actually recently from talking to him. Uh, He's actually the kid's favorite substitute teacher, because not only does he fill in for their teacher, he also fills in for a barricade in case of an active shooter. Dude, I just saw a job application that said sub, and I was like, the sandwich? Uh, dude, I have heard that childhood smoking can uh, stunt your growth, and it did. It did. Zach looks like a cotton t-shirt, pretty shrunk. Uh, what I didn't know uh, was that it could turn you into all lips and depression. <laughs> That is true, I am sure. You could say that I am not long, just like Luke Bentley is not long for this world. <laughs> that yeah, Luke, Luke is actually, um, he's kind of um, a celebrity in Atlanta, you know? I don't know if y'all know this, but um, every lesbian who gentrified Decatur goes to their barber shop and goes, give me that Luke Bentley cut. <laughs> <laughs> right. Honestly, <laughs> Honestly, Zach is like a walking vice documentary. He looks like the kid of every wrestler who's died. And recently featured in a doc on teenage homelessness. No, dude, I want to be out here. Okay. Let's go round two. Let's fucking get it. Let's go. Let's get that energy up. All right. I think I go first this time. Is that true? Okay. Uh, yes, I'm well nourished. <laughs> Beats malnourished. Zach, your skin is clear, not like unblemished, but see-through. Your veins, they're a roadmap. Destination, melanoma. <laughs> That's perfect, because uh, Luke Bailey looks like he has a hard time tying his shoes. <laughs> not because he's fat, he just looks pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> Give it up for Zach, dude. He has a high school degree. Uh, <laughs> and a semester of film school. <laughs> was that finished? Was that the... Okay, cool. I, I don't know. I think Zach is British and just hasn't been telling anybody. Here's the deal. He loves soccer, which is gay. Uh, he's as pale as the anemic royal family. And his teeth look like they got hit by a double-decker bus. <laughs> I don't expect such heat coming from Luke because uh, Luke is actually a uh, Christian. You're a very Christian. You used to be a youth pastor. Uh, Luke is such a good Christian that actually I left the church and talking to him actually convinced me to come back. Nothing he said about the word, but when I found out he does not have diabetes, I was like, oh, fuck, those prayers are coming. <laughs> Zach, you didn't expect this heat. I am nothing but warmth. <laughs> Zach's teeth are bad, though. Uh, they're like the Palestinians in Gaza. Crowded. Uh, that gap in the middle, I call that the humanitarian corridor. So. Paul loves Israel, dude. Uh, All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Luke also runs a comedy show, a late-night comedy show at an Irish pub. And I have seen this man start the show multiple times and watch regulars leave. Which, I don't know how bad you have to be at comedy to make the Irish go, Hey, we should stop drinking and get ready for work. 
keyword runs, dude. I mean, come on. I was at the beginning. I'll kill myself. All right, y'all. Break it the fuck up. Round three. Let's fucking go. So I go first. Okay. Um. So I actually met Luke's girlfriend recently. I met his girlfriend for the first time. It was very surprising to meet her. It caught me off guard because you know she's very funny, smart. Beautiful, it caught me out. It did not seem like his type. His type seems like type two. <laughs> <laughs> of, yeah, of course, I am fat, yes. And Zach does remind me of all my fifth grade bullies. <laughs> He's four feet tall. Uh, yeah, dude, he looks like a previously conjoined twin. <laughs> in the womb. <laughs> Dude, give me strength. So. <laughs> uh, like talk about Luke is a Christian, which as you can tell by looking at him, uh, when he went up for communion, communion and he ate the body of Christ, he always asked for more, which is very ironic because whenever he eats, his body is like, Jesus Christ, more? <laughs> yeah, dude, they baptized me in an Olympic swimming pool. <laughs> All right, Zach bleached his, bleached his hair because uh, the everything else about him didn't scream 25-year-old burnout loudly enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, most people ballpark 18. I'm just happy that I finally look my age. <laughs> Uh, every time I see, see Luke Bentley, all I can think is, damn, the casting agents at ABC really got it wrong. This is what John Goodman and Roseanne Barr's kid looks like. <laughs> it's very perfect because he does tweet like Roseanne Barr off an ambient. <laughs> Dude, that is a very old reference, so good for getting one for Marshall, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Zach, I've never seen a native speaker struggle so much with English. It, it's like your mouth is still figuring out you have teeth. So, uh, you know, good battle. Would have been better as a one-rounder, I think. Those three-rounders are tough, especially when you're hitting the same kind of thing over and over again. I actually thought... I, had, I was edging Zach both of the first two rounds. I, I thought that he kind of had it, but by the third, the, the fat jokes, uh, you know, my favorite joke of his might have been the only non-fat joke when he was like, do you know how bad you have to be at comedy to make the Irish stop drinking and that be like, let's get ready bit. for work? That was, uh, that was so good, but they both had, uh, they both had some, some heavy punches in there. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. It was long. Uh, it was. They were. You could tell they were friends, and that was fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, but it was like a, a battle of like cow versus chicken. If you remember that that cartoon <laughs> on do. Cartoon Network. Yeah. Uh, or it looked like Billy Joel of Green Day versus John Popper of Blues Traveler. <laughs> looked like Fallout Boy versus the Fallout. It looked like Green Day versus the album Dookie. Uh, there's just a lot of things you could say about this one. So what I will say though is, um, yeah, one round uh, just felt like it was going a lot, a, a little long, and even Jerron with his host, and you could tell the audience was just like, okay, another three rounder of just like, <laughs> you know, like I don't know. But I, I like that Luke was trying political jokes in the South uh, that he knew wouldn't land, and, and really tried to squeeze him in there because he's so likable. Yeah. So I thought that like you know, is trying things is concerned, I guess. But that was a boring battle, man. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> There, I can always count on you to uh to to give it to us straight. Yeah, that one wasn't hitting for you, huh? No, it wasn't. I, I like the last one, even though that one was it was almost the same battle basically. Like they were just trying things out. You know, they want to like ruin a friendship. Yeah, but they were like, oh, I'm gonna give you some good jokes though. Yeah, with like Cleveland, they were just like, we're going as hard as possible. We're probably gonna leave here together and fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the one thing also, um, and for whatever reason, man, this this seems to be universal across roast battle. Teeth jokes very rarely work. Um, and, and Luke was going in like heavy on the teeth joke. So I think that there's like a learning curve for like a, like a newer city like Atlanta. Um, but I, I'm so excited about the potential of the scene there, just knowing the level of comedy that comes out of Atlanta, um, and having sort of those intangibles that, uh, that go along with, uh, you know, RBL Atlanta. I think that, I think it's going to be a successful scene, but I think there's definitely going to be a period where they're trying to figure it out a little bit. Absolutely. But I'm excited that they're in the scene because we do need something in that Southeast, that whole region loves to talk shit. It's the, it's deep Bible belt. I'm excited to hear a lot of, uh, 
a lot of I just realized a lot of uh, Southern style jokes, and yeah. I don't think we, we get a lot of those. We get a lot of that ball busty culture in, in New York. Uh, Austin does a lot of the buzzword heavy stuff. You know, mm-hmm. they they're uh, very prerogative. Um, and then obviously the West Coast, you know, they're very performative. And then the Bay Area's got the uh, got really really smart jokes and silly jokes down in Denver. Yeah. Absolutely. So different styles coming from different cities. Atlanta and Cleveland are officially part of the league. They will be matched up with Chicago and New York. That is not an easy division to uh, to make your debut in. Good luck, Atlanta. Uh, I mean, even with <laughs> Cleveland. Good I luck mean, both. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Cleveland's fun though, man. I, I wouldn't sleep on Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, not sleeping on anybody, but. Um, you know, Chicago and New York, the performance that they had last season, I think that they are going to be the clear favorites going into this thing. We'll be talking more in the next couple of weeks as we build to the, the beginning of the season on March 1st. We will be talking about uh, making official predictions for the league, for MVP, for uh, the division winners, everything like that. Uh, so I don't want to get too into it now. But overall, how are you feeling about our four expansion cities? Oh, really good now. I mean, I was I didn't know, yeah. right? You had told me there were some uh, some guys you had cut, and I was like, and I've seen the the Milwaukee scene, and they're they're really good. Milwaukee's like, really good, yeah. Yeah, they're just like Chicago. I think I was out there for uh, one of their roast battles, and uh, hmm. they're very very impressive. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, who are you bringing in? And then you see Cleveland, and uh, the eight years of experience, I can definitely see it. You can see how familial and and close that uh, community is when it comes yeah. to roast battles. So I love that pick. Atlanta's gonna grow into it. I'm excited about them. Uh, this is fun, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, hey, my pleasure. Um, and uh, yeah, again, like I said last episode, to everybody else who didn't quite make the cut, um, you know, stick with it. We uh, we this thing's going to keep growing and expanding, and we we want eventually uh, total world domination. So we're on our way slowly but surely. Twelve cities become sixteen cities. New season launches March first. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, making some official predictions, talking about some rule changes this season for the way we score things, and uh, yeah, getting you guys prepared for the twenty twenty four season. So until then. I'm Pat Barker, that's Brian Moses, and we'll see you guys next week. Let's roast!